Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, we're gonna do another episode of Bites and Nibbles with Breck today. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my mom sent me some recipes she found and I started thumbing through a couple of them today and one of them looked really interesting. I said, you know what, I'm gonna try that. Uh, the recipe was for smoked pork chops. And so this is something I'm gonna be able to do on the smoker and I don't get to do a whole bunch of those. So let's get going with some smoked pork chops. All right, so here are the ingredients for our smoked pork chops. First off, we're gonna use a little brown sugar, some paprika, some chili powder, some onion powder, some garlic powder, some ground mustard, a little uh, Old Bay seasoning, salt and pepper, and of course, pork chops. Now one of the cool things about doing a vlog that includes cooking recipes from time to time is that you build up quite an impressive collection of spices and uh, in this case the only thing I didn't have was the Old Bay seasoning. So I had to go to Walmart to find that, they didn't even have that at HEB. But, uh, uh, I was able to find it very easily at Walmart and one other thing with the pork chops They recommend that you go like thick cut pork chops at least an inch thick. So that's what I found Now this recipe isn't particularly difficult, but it is a little time-consuming because after you apply the uh, Spices to the meat you have to kind of let the meat sit for a while and then of course uh, when you put it on the smoker The smoker takes a little time too. So it's about 2 in the afternoon and I'm kind of starting this for dinner so it will be ready about dinner time, but like I said, I'm starting now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out all my dry ingredients into this little metal bowl here. And that measures out as follows. First off, one tablespoon of brown sugar. That's gonna be packed, because that's what you often have to do with brown sugar. Two tablespoons of paprika. And two. Two tablespoons of garlic powder. That's one and two, half a teaspoon of ground mustard, half a teaspoon of Old Bay uh, seasoning, half a tablespoon of salt, so that's going to be one teaspoon and one half a teaspoon, so there's the half a tablespoon, half a teaspoon of uh, ground pepper, I'm just going to kind of eyeball that because a little bit more pepper won't kill you. And since I like pepper, I'm going to actually overdo it a little bit. A half a teaspoon of onion powder. And half a tablespoon of chili powder. And then I'm just going to kind of mix this all together, kind of get it all blended up. Now I kind of got in there and mashed up the uh, brown sugar a little bit because, it, like I said, it clumped because you got it all packed into the spoon there. and. You had to kind of unpack it to get it all blended in or else you have kind of big chunks of brown sugar in it and so don't necessarily want that but just kind of got it all blended together and so you can't really see any one particular ingredient it just kind of looks like a, a very consistent very smooth uh, mixture and that's what we're going to coat our pork with all right, so I've transferred six pork chops into a non-metallic bowl. That's what they recommend in the recipe. And I also have one of these cool little shaker bottles here. So I've transferred my seasoning into that. And I'm just gonna kind of just kind of uh, coat all of the pork chops, all sides of the pork chops, kind of evenly uh, with the uh, with the spices. I'm gonna kind of go a little little uh, lean right at the beginning because I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna have uh, but we'll go we'll go do double coats later on once we once we got everything coated properly all right so yeah I probably can put a lot more on here because I don't even have all of it in the mixing in the little uh, in the little spreader thing and I only use maybe a quarter of that so yeah we're gonna we're gonna pour it on a little thicker here I think that will be fine doesn't look like we're gonna run out here. All right, we're gonna flip the meat over to the other side and then we'll also kind of get the sides too. All right, let's put some more on. Now 
Actually, it smells pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna kind of flip them up on the sides and try and get the sides too. All right, I'm gonna kind of flip them up on the side here a little bit, hit the side really well. Flip it over. And then back into the pan. I still got a little bit more of the seasoning in the bowl, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over again and uh, just coat the other side a little bit more. Catch up with you in a minute. All right, so I got all the spices on the meat. Um, both sides are really well packed and covered. And I put some saran wrap on top of it, and we're going to throw it in the refrigerator and kind of just let it uh, soak for a little while. So they say about two to three hours, so I'll catch up with you in two to three hours. In the meantime, I got a little business to take care of. All right, so sales of the t-shirts ended last night, and I'm here at Big Frog in Waco to place our order. So let's go in and get this going. Now, my understanding is they don't keep the blank shirts in stock. So I'm going to have to order the shirts, and then uh, they'll print them when the shirts come in. So that's what I'm here to do today. All right, so I've placed my order. Um, they're going to actually order probably early next week. Uh, I don't know why they don't order today. So maybe a week or two before we get to this. And uh, I talked to a second person. They said they didn't think it was going to be a problem with me being able to film some of the uh, printing of the shirts. So hopefully we'll come back and get to see this be done. Until then, let's move on to the next thing. All right, a couple hours have gone by with the meat kind of uh, basting in the... Uh, in the refrigerator. I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. I don't think I'm gonna go full three hours. It said two to three hours on the recipe. I think we'll go two and a half hours and that's like 20, 25 minutes from now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start getting the uh, the pellet grill ready to go here. I've got uh, some of my mesquite pellets in the, uh, in the hopper. I'm gonna power it up and we are going to preheat the thing to two and a quarter. That's what they recommend. I'll bring the probes out here and we'll feed those through before we get going too far because uh, we're going to probe a couple of the chunks of meat so we can monitor the internal temperature. But this will take a little time to heat up so might as well start that now. Alright, we are up to our target temperature right now so we're going to bring the meat out and get it on the grill. Alright, we got everything on the grill. We got the probes kind of strung through. Um, I've got like a couple different thicknesses of meat so what I did is I put one probe on what I thought was one of the thinner slices of meat and the other one on the thicker slice of meat and then we'll kind of monitor the two of them down here and then we can see which one's going you know when when the thinner one is starting to get a little uh, cook because I'm, I'm guessing that will cook and heat up quicker than the uh, than the thicker slice of meat but what we're looking for is a target internal temperature of about 145 in there so we'll watch this slowly over the next uh, 45 to 45 minutes to an hour and uh, we'll go pull it off at the right time all right the meat's been cooking for about 30 minutes now uh, and the probe one which is the one on the thin piece of meat has reached an internal temperature of 132 degrees probe number two which is on the thicker piece of meat is about 129 degrees so we're getting there uh, we'll get let it go for a little while longer um, it's kind of interesting that the that both of the pieces of meat have kind of gotten very close to each other temperature wise I would have figured there would have been a little bit more difference from them because it's gonna take a little while more to cook to the center of the thick piece of meat but that doesn't seem to be the case in this case so we'll let it go for a little while and catch up in a bit all right so all of the meat now has hit a minimum of 145 ironically the thick piece of meat is actually running a little warmer than the thin piece of meat who thought anyway I'm done we're gonna shut this off power down and let's see what we got all right well let's get that off the grill get it in the house and do a little taste test all right so initially you might look at this and say hmm, it looks like it's maybe a little burn but it's just kind of the outer crust on it I think uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff in the spices kind of turn a little dark as uh, as they get cooked but when I stick the fork in it it's really really tender and uh, looks like it should be pretty good. I also had some peas in the freezer, so I put those in the instant pot and cooked those. So we're gonna have a little veggie with that too. But let's give this thing its all important taste test. 
Oh yeah, looks good. Yeah, I probably would like a little bit more bite on the uh, on the spices. Uh, you can definitely taste the smoke flavor, and it's very very tender. Um, so that's that's pretty good. I'd probably add a little barbecue sauce to this to to increase increase the flavor, but. This was pretty good. Um, you know, I would definitely recommend you try this. And for those of you who don't have an instant pot, you know, this has uh, been a little chance to try something different. Now all I gotta do is go out and get a smoker, right? Um, but yeah, this was pretty good. Um, like I said, I probably uh, goose it up a little bit with some uh, barbecue sauce. But other than that, this is a uh, this is a good thing. I'll uh, I'll try this again, and uh, you know, maybe we'll add a little cayenne pepper or something next time to to. Uh, <coughs> turn up the heat a little bit, if you will. Uh, so anyway, I'll include the recipe for this in the comments below. Uh, check it out if you like. And uh, other than that, I think we've come to the end of our video. So thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Bon appetit.